Hi, I'm Larry Troca, and today we're going to do a, a video on horses that spook and how to deal with it. You know, spooking is a common problem. Um, most people have, have had to deal with it at one time or another. So today I want to talk about why horses spook, how to prevent it, or at least to minimize it. And the third thing I want to talk about is how to get control of your horse and, you know, save yourself from the possibility of getting hurt. Okay, and spooking is something I've had a lot of experience with because, you know, when I was a, a little kid, uh, seven years old, I got my first horse. Uh, my parents got him for me, and this was a spooking son of a gun now. Uh, his name was Lucky, and <laughs> Lucky only cost $75, uh, and that included the saddle. And there was a reason why he was that cheap. Uh, when when uh, the very first time I rode him, I found out real quick that uh, Lucky was a big time spooker. And you know, what he would do is we'd be riding along and all of a sudden his head would go way up high and he'd let out a, a loud snort, you know, out of his nose. And next thing you know, he would wheel around 180 degrees, bog his head and start bucking like a saddle bronc. Well, you know, I'm only seven years old. I mean, what am I going to do uh, other than get bucked off into the ditch alongside the road? And uh, as soon as I was bucked off, well, you know, Lucky was making a beeline back home. And, uh, you know, this went on for months until, you know, I eventually got where I could ride the bucking storm. And, uh, you know, he'd see I was still on. He'd still stampede off. But then what he would do, you know, he'd, he'd see somebody's driveway, run up the driveway, look for a clothesline, and try to go under it and clothesline me right out of the saddle. And this went on for quite a while. And, you know, I never did get him over that. And, and you know, he'd put, you know, let some of my friends ride him. And, you know, he hurt a lot of people. So this is something that is dead serious uh, that we got to get a handle on. Now, let's talk about why horses spook. You know, all horses will spook at one time or another. Uh, it's their it's their inborn instinct to spook. You know, when during the during their their period of evolution, you know, the horses that were real wary and uh, you know spooked at anything that looked like it might be a hiding predator. You know, those are the horses that survived. And the ones that, that weren't wary, the ones that didn't spook, were the ones that got, you know, ate by the predators. So, you know, horses have evolved to be real wary of anything that they're not familiar with or anything that looks like a possible predator. Um, and there's two, there's two um, ways that horses spook. You know, something, you know, if you're riding along and all of a sudden something jumps out of the weeds, well, you know what, any horse is going to spook. And you're not going to prevent that. I mean, that's just their inborn instinct. And you just better be a good enough rider to be able to stay on when they jump away from it. You know, they might jump away from it and then just stop and see what it is. Other horses are going to jump away from it, bog their head and buck. Others are going to just take off like a rocket. The other form of spooking is when a horse sees something way off in the distance, like this horse is doing now. He sees something over there, you know, that looks like possible danger. And, you know, if you're going to have one just spooking, I mean, that's what you want, something that's going to warn you that the spooking's coming. Now, what needs to be done, you as a rider have to, have to face reality. If you're a poor rider, you know, if, you, if your balance is bad and, and you've got to hang on to the saddle horn to stay on, you're going to have a tough time dealing with horses that spook. What happens to a lot of people is the horse spooks and they get the old death grip on his mouth and, you know, fall off anyway. Or they'll clamp onto the horn and go into the fetal position and end up on the horse's neck. Or what's even worse, I've seen some people, the horse starts to spook they pull for all they're worth to stop him and they flip the horse over backwards on themselves. I don't know how many, yeah, I've gotten a jillion emails from people saying, what do I do? You know, my horse spooks and flips over backwards. Well, no, he doesn't. He spooks and you pull him over backwards on you. Okay. So you got to be careful that you don't do that. If you're not a good enough rider 
you need to work on that to become a good rider, okay? There's no, there's no uh, getting away from that, okay? Um, the one way that you can, the only way, really, that you can prevent yourself from getting hurt is to have so much control on your horse that he listens to you more than he does being afraid of whatever is spooking him, okay? And let me put that in other words. Your desire, your hands, your legs need to override whatever it is that he's afraid of, okay? Now, on a horse that's really broke, you know, one that, that, that moves off leg pressure, one that respects what, you know, what I'm doing with my hands, yeah, they might still spook, but they're not going to spook and buck me off, and they're not going to spook and take off at a dead run where I can't get them stopped, okay? So, you know, if I'm, if I'm you know, if I got my horse broke, and, and let me show you what I mean by broke. The way, the, the only real control that you have over any horse is the ability to take his head away, okay? When a horse panics, spooks, whatever, the, about the only thing I can do is pull his head around and get control of him, get him stopped, okay? He can't really do much with his head pulled around like that, okay? So if he spooks and I can reach down and hurry up and get his head, I can get control of the situation. Now, a lot of people have seen that technique and they've heard of that technique and have tried that technique when their horse spooks. And what they end up doing is they reach down and pull the rein, the horse stiffens up his neck, rears up or flips over backwards, or ignores their hand, sets their neck solid where they can't get their head and take off running, okay? And those people say, well, that doesn't work. Well, yes, it does work, but you've got to prepare your horse for it. Um, you know, you just can't go cold turkey and think you can reach down and get his head on a horse that, that doesn't know how to give his head. So before you ever get yourself in trouble out on the trail, you know, you need to have that horse to where he will lightly give his head to you. When you bump that rein, he needs to give it, okay? The way we teach that is we ask lightly, and if they don't come, we bump it. We get them conditioned to where they'll respond to us. Now, they not only have to give laterally, they also need to give vertically because if the horse spooks real quick, you, the only thing you might be able to do is pull straight back, okay? And if he'll give to your hands, at least he'll drop off the bit instead of rearing up with you, okay?